back pain. It stops people in their tracks. It's one of the top reasons people miss work and miss out on doing the things they love. Yet many people have shied away from treatments because they seem so invasive. The man you're about to meet felt the same way until he researched the latest innovations. Take a look. Imagine not being able to bend to tie your own shoe. Imagine reaching to turn a light off makes your back cramp up in pain. Imagine having to sit out every family activity. For a long time, this was life for Steve Wigley. I actually got to a point where I was rolling out of bed onto my knees and then standing up. Um, it's just that, that's how much pain I would be in. For some people, back pain stems from infection, disease, or weak muscles. For Steve, it dates back to one fateful day when he was 17. Vehicle hit us and I was thrown through a car window. His back never quite healed. In fact, it got worse. Eventually got to a point where I had to do something or I'd probably be in a wheelchair in five years. With two daughters headed for college and his future as a glass worker in jeopardy. Every day, every day he was in pain. Steve turned to Sutter Roseville Medical Center Dr. Artavon Asley. When a patient presents to my office with back pain, my job is to try whatever I can to avoid surgery. Doctors will first try physical therapy and oral medications for good reason. Lots of time, the injury is in a molecular level, so you cannot detect it with the MRI or X-ray or other studies. But Steve's condition had reached the point where more was needed. I did have a pinched nerve, um, but it was because the disc was, was basically gone, it was smashed. Whether it's to fix a disc, fuse a bone, or remove a tumor, doctors have traditionally accessed the spine through the front or back of the body. We couldn't come through the sides because that's where the nerves come out and they go toward the legs and innervate the legs. Now, nerves are very sensitive structures and you don't want to damage them. But when you go through the front or back, you have to cut through muscle because of how the muscles are situated. Throughout the years, we have come to the understanding that the muscle actually has a very important function in the back when we have to preserve it as much as we can. Preserve, don't disturb. That sounded good to Steve. He chose the operation spine surgeons call the X-lift. Now we can access the spine through the side and we can use this approach for anything. Working through a small incision, Dr. Asley uses high-tech nerve probes and navigation to part the muscles that line up along the patient's side. We can actually place this probe on the muscle where the nerves are coming through. And if they're very close, we can move them out of the way. Therefore, we can have a clear shot into the spine. In Steve's case, Dr. Asley replaced the worn out disc with this, a prosthetic frame. It houses bone growing protein, like the kind your body makes, only grown in a lab. And then within the next three to four months, bone starts growing from the two vertebrae and they meet in the middle, therefore stabilizing the segment. The healing part's going very well for me. My mobility's gotten better, I can tie my shoe now without having to lift my leg up onto my knee. Healing is a gradual process. It takes perseverance and a positive attitude. And Steve has both in abundance. I probably stopped taking medication for my back pain about three or four months ago. With a return to work on the horizon, Steve is taking advice we can all use to stabilize our spines. Watch the posture, lift only with the legs, and tone up the abs, which in turn strengthens the back. Steve's lumbar range of motion is almost within functional limits. I've gone through this major uh, thing in my life, and I'm so much better for it.